Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Swanee. Welcome to uh, Train Simulator 2017. Uh, we're going to be on the North Jersey coastline today, uh, take, doing a commuter service um, over to Hoboken and the P40. Uh, we'll go ahead and get this started. Uh, let's see. It says, good morning, engineer. You are tasked with finishing off a passenger service coming from Bayhead. Picking things up here in Woodbridge. The line ahead is clear, and it's a beautiful day, so there shouldn't be any delays. After picking up passengers, you can continue on to Newark, and finally, Hoboken. Good luck. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get this started. We'll go ahead and get the passengers uh, loaded up here. So I'm not really sure how we want to format these videos yet. Uh, this is the first transcend video I'm doing, so uh, I'm not sure if I want to do, uh, you know, the full the full uh, video of the mission itself, uh, which you know this one's a, a little bit of a shorter mission, but uh, could be a lot longer. Um, the two options would be just letting it play out the whole time, or uh, you know maybe doing some some skip skipping in between. Uh, to be able to kind of get through it a little bit quicker. So let me know what you guys want to do on that. We'll go ahead and get out of the station here. There we go. Cut the bell. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, I ended up. I just got my new PC uh, hooked up last week, and I've just been installing all my games uh, that I've been getting. And uh, you know, it's this is definitely a big step up from what I had before. Um, I was running uh, on my laptop from work, and uh, you know, I was barely getting by with this game. Uh, most games I couldn't play, but this game I could barely get by. Uh, I was running pretty much the lowest settings you can possibly do, and uh, you know I was getting like 13 to 14 frames per second, which is pretty terrible. So, uh, you know the, the missions would kind of almost take twice as long just because you know most games run at 30 frames per second, and you know I was running at half of that, so it would take twice as long. So it was kind of getting frustrating to the point, and I kind of just decided, uh, you know, it's time to go ahead and pick up a, a gaming computer. Um, and so, you know, with that, I can I can run all of my games at full settings now, and I, I think I'm getting like 100 frames per second now with this. So, uh, it's a huge, huge step up, um, you know, from what it was before. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's kind of nice to be able to finally see this game in it with its full potential, and and uh, just kind of be able to play the game without having to have everything be blurry and and and, and jumpy. So pretty excited about that there's a couple other games that i've been getting um on the computer as well getting set up uh one of them is uh x-plane 10 uh, I, I played a lot of flight simming uh a couple years ago obviously uh you know when it wasn't as demanding as it as it is now um and and so i was able to uh you know pick up x-plane 10 now with this new computer and, and pretty much run max max settings on that game as well which is pretty exciting because uh you know that game takes you know, a pretty incredible computer to be able to do that. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, that is something I am planning on and bringing to the channel. Um, I did a lot of that in the past with my old channel. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, looking back on it, it's not exactly what I, uh, it's not exactly the quality that I, uh, you know, want to do now. But uh, I think that with a new computer and, you know, the, the, the new uh, new software, the new games, and all the new add-ons that are a, a lot better. It should be more of a it should be a better a better video, better quality gameplay. So I'm really looking forward to bringing those to the channel as well at some point. Um, I'm just kind of trying to get everything set up on that game. There's a lot a lot to set up and a lot of practice that needs to be done to get everything to that to that point where it's uh, smooth enough for a video. Um, we're getting ourselves slowed down here. We got a 30 mile an hour speed restriction popping up here in about half a uh, quarter mile. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and get ourselves slowed down a little bit here. We don't want to slow down too much just because uh, it will cut into our our timetable and we might end up being a little bit late. So we'll kind of just gradually put the brakes on as we go. All right, now we'll go ahead and throw them in, get it down to uh, about 
right there. And a little tip for you guys, um, as far as speed restrictions go, you can actually run your speed all the way up to 30.9. Uh, it actually kicks in the speeding penalty at 31. So uh, I found if you keep it in that range, uh, you can actually do pretty well. Oh, we gotta get ourselves slowed down here. There we go. Get ourselves uh, to our station on time and not to worry about being late. Um, for those of you guys that have issues keeping the, the timetable. So just a little tip for you guys. All right, so we got about, uh, let's see it. A little less than, uh, a little more than three quarter miles to our first waypoint. Uh, looks like we'll be able to bump up our speed here in a second so we can kind of get moving again. Um, in the meantime, we'll just kind of enjoy the scenery, which is a uh, wall. <laughs> but uh, actually, it looks like we're going up a hill here, so let's get a little bit of extra power going up this hill. So yeah, these are the points that I was thinking about, you know, possibly doing a, a time lapse on, whether it's in the cab itself kind of just do a, a time lapse and move it forward and uh, at a quicker pace or you know we could do shots of like the, the, the passenger views or uh you know drive-by view or um yeah, drive-by views or stuff like that so let me know if you guys think about that um i know some of you guys enjoy looking watching the whole thing and that's fine too um i'm i'm cool with it either way uh, it doesn't really bother me um that's usually how i play the game i don't i mean obviously i can't edit stuff while i'm playing but um it doesn't bother me to sit here and, and watch the track, so. Alright, so we should be able to start accelerating here. 125 is the speed limit. Oh, nope, just kidding. Alright, so it's only 45. Um, that's something I've noticed with this game. Um, you know, it, it, it'll give you a speed restriction down on the lower panel that you guys saw. Um, and it doesn't more for when you're when you're trying to go down in the speed limit versus going up in the speed limit. But uh, for instance, it said it was supposed to be 125, but it, and it did just jump to 125. But for that short stint, it was at 45. So um, it it gets frustrating when it's when it's the other way around, and say you're trying to slow down, it says you need to get to like 45. But when you hit the 45, it really goes to like 25 or 15, um, and then you end up, you know. It ends up docking your score because of it, which is kind of frustrating because uh, for someone like myself, I, I enjoy, or I, you know, I try to get as close as I can to the, you know, the perfect 1,000 points, which is 100%, and when something like that kind of happens, it's kind of frustrating. Another thing that used to happen to me a lot was, uh, with my old computer at least, was the, the visuals were so bad that I couldn't even look forward far enough to see what the signals were going to be until I got right in front of them. So, you know, I would I would end up passing through a bunch of reds just because there was no way for me to even tell if they were going to be red or not. There was just absolutely no way. The only way I could really do it was if I went to like a free cam and zoomed and just kind of like went up to the next signal and checked it like that way, but it wasn't really ideal. So I'm kind of happy now that I'm able to look and see stuff ahead of time so I don't have to worry about that because I have my settings put to where if that if I cross over that uh, red signal it automatically uh, kills the scenario so so I'm looking for I'm looking for routes and stuff guys so if you guys have any uh, recommendations uh, for routes Go ahead and leave those in the comments section. Uh, there's a huge sale that's going to be coming up. I'm, is what I'm assuming at least for you know Black Friday and, and stuff like that, Christmas and whatever, but not. So uh, you know I have most of the routes so far, um, mostly American. I do have a couple European, obviously the ones that came with the game, and, and then maybe one or two more. And, you know, I haven't really played too many of those. I, I, I've seen people play them, and they look interesting. I'm just not really comfortable with them, so I haven't really gone over to them yet. 
And if that's something you guys want to see, I, I'm I'm definitely willing to try new things out. Um, you know, I've obviously played probably every scenario on the on the, all the U.S. routes, so kind of looking for some new challenges. Uh, I do a lot of the Steam Workshop, which is kind of what gets me by. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any suggestions for European routes specifically, or even even some U.S. routes, there's I don't have all of them. I have most of them, but I don't have all of them. Or locomotives, or or whatnot. Something that you guys want to see, or something you guys recommend is worth buying. Uh, make sure you let me know. Uh, I'll definitely take a look and possibly pick them up. Um, I am super excited about Train Sim World coming out. Uh, my thoughts on that game are. I almost want to just wait until the real game comes out and not get the beta just because um, we'll get slowed down here we got a 55 coming up I don't really want to get the beta necessarily because it requires you to buy a couple more routes for this game that I don't have um, and with the new game coming out I don't know if this is really going to be a relevant game to even play at that point because it's going to be such a huge jump in quality and in gameplay I mean they're, they're, they're really they're putting it on the engine that's that you could play Battlefield or GTA 5 or, or those types of games. I mean, I, I'm expecting it to be a whole nother level. I mean, as far as realism and physics and sounds and visuals and all that goes. So, I don't really know if I want to purchase more routes for this game. I, I have the whole complete your collection thing. And, you know, I think they only have two or three routes I'm missing. But at the same time, I don't really want to shell out 50 or 60 bucks for a game I probably won't play three months down the road so um, my plan is probably just to check out the the beta videos that people make I'm sure there'll be some videos out there and if it really looks amazing and it's worth it then maybe I'll do it down the road but it's not really on my list right now um, but I am looking forward to it. it it's supposed to come out in February that's not really that long it's like four months so I mean it's I can be patient enough for that I think Let me know what you guys think about that. I, I don't know. I mean, is something I should pick up? Is it worth it? I, I don't know. I'm on the fence. If you guys haven't seen the the you know the developer diaries, um, which kind of show all the new features and physics engines and stuff like that from the developer side, and they kind of talk about that, go check it out. It's on the the train sim uh, train simulator.com. Uh, there's kind of a whole tab for the new train sim world also shows some screenshots of the new game uh, and they look they look fantastic literally fantastic I mean I'm, I'm really 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 looking forward to it I think it's gonna definitely change train simming you know for, for the better so that's, that's what I'm hoping uh, it looks like they're only coming out with one route to start and I'm not sure if that's how they plan on doing it. If it's going to be like a huge overall platform like this game was and there's just add-on routes. Or if every route's going to be its own game. Um, you know, I imagine there's got to be so much that goes into a route with that engine. I mean, it's just got to be... I can imagine that being its own game. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're all their own games. But I'd be kind of curious to see how that works. Um, they did mention that there's a bunch of new routes coming out, and I don't know if that's going to be new routes for Transom World or new routes for Transom World 17. One route that I've been waiting for that I think they mentioned that might be popping up is uh, the Caltrain route, which is uh, you know my local commuter route. I live here in the in the Bay Area, and that travels from like San Jose up to San Francisco. Um, and I've been waiting for that for a long time. I think there was a guy that that started making it on the on the workshop, and he did a really really good job on it, but he kind of guess got burnt out on it and he just stopped making it um which is unfortunate because it was really really good i mean it was it was definitely like payroll quality so i'd be curious to see if they use that as a basis um and just jump from there i, I don't i don't know but regardless i would i really hope that that's going to come out on the new one because I really think that once that game comes out, no one's going to even play this game anymore. And I, I, and I think that's the point. I think that's the point, but I could be wrong. I do know that you're going to need a pretty crazy PC to play that game. It's going to take, like, flight sim computers to play that game. I'm, this would be my guess, because it's just... The rendering is just going to be, you know, something that no one's ever seen before as far as train simming goes. 
let's get slowed down a little bit. We're getting close to the station. We're about two and a half miles out. Uh, I got a 70 speed limit popping up here real shortly. So I don't want to slow down the train too much. So we'll just kind of let it slow itself down. Uh, we're, really, we're really looking to get under 71. I think we're going to make it. Because like I said, we can be 70.9 and not hit the not hit the penalty. So that will work. Um, we'll actually hit one more notch up. Another thing I need to do is uh, is get all my get all my audio stuff and and uh, DLC switched over to this PC. Obviously, all the DLC that comes out through Steam has already been pre-installed, but there's a lot of third-party stuff that I've had in the past from ever since Train Sim actually came out by itself. Uh, I think it was like 2012 or something like that, and. Uh, something I need to work on. Uh, I have a lot of audio stuff too that needs to be switched over, like custom horns, custom sounds, custom pretty much everything. Um, a lot of my custom stuff was from the Audio Shack. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description. He's, he's got some really good work as far as uh, sounds go. Uh, he does a lot of passenger trains, commuter trains, freight trains. Um, it's definitely worth checking out if you're into the, the whole experience of sounds. I think that's like, to me, that's probably my most important Part of a sim is is having the right sounds so uh, to me it's worth it i think they're like 10 bucks per engine or per pack so it's not really too much um so i'll leave a link you guys can check it out um he's a cool guy i've, I've talked to him once or twice he's helped me out with getting my products all set up and stuff like that so uh you know it's it's definitely a, an easy process to get your stuff and uh, get it installed it's fairly simple so All right, so it looks like we're pulling up onto Newark. We've got about half a mile to go, and we got the 35 mile an hour speed restriction about uh, coming up real shortly. So we are set for that. Um, so far, we're doing good. Timing wise, we are right on time. Maybe a hair hair late, but I'm not really too worried about it. Uh, we should still get the full points. So. We'll Put the bell on, let people know we're coming. I like to leave my speed coming at full until I hit the beginning of the green line, and then go ahead and throw my brakes in. And it usually ends up working out pretty well. I usually go a little bit faster than that. I usually go about 45 to 40 when I come in, but obviously there was that 35 mile an hour speed restriction, so I couldn't do that with this one, but. That will work. We're right in the middle of the station. All the cars are on the platform, so there's no issues. Uh, it actually helps us get there a little bit quicker anyway, so we might be able to keep us from losing points on that. Let's pop outside and check it out. I actually really, I actually really like this add-on. It's This was one that I ended up purchasing prior to 2017 coming out, which is kind of a shame because it was almost a free update anyway, I think. Um, but, uh, oh, we didn't get full points. That sucks. Close, though. Um, but yeah, I picked this up before TS 2017 came out, which was included in that game. Um, I pretty much have all the commuter routes. Uh, I'm more of a passenger kind of guy than a freight kind of guy. Um, so this is just one that I didn't have that I wanted to pick up. Um, and so far so good. I actually enjoy it. It's uh, it's a good mix. You can play, uh, you know, you can you can do diesel like this, or you can run electric with the I think it's the ALP 45s that they have on the the base pack. Um, and then you can also do I think I believe you can do some freight on this too if you really wanted to. I'm not sure if that's this one or New Haven, but. Um, regardless, it's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good route. It's, it's fairly long. It's got, uh, like I said, a good mix of stuff. So if you guys don't have this one, uh, it's a, it's a definitely one to check out. I think they usually have it on sale a lot too. So just keep an eye out for that. It might be worth just kind of chilling and waiting on it to see if they can get a, get it on sale. All right, let's keep this, slow ourselves down a little bit. We don't want to have to slow our train down too much before we get to that 60. The whole idea of that is to get it all timed out, right? So you don't have to slow your train down. Um, like if you get up to speed really quick, and then you have a, you know, a, 
an added speed that you can, you know, if you have an increase in speed limit coming up, you don't have to slow your train down and have to speed it back up again. You want to, like, try to time it right so you can hit that next level of power, right, as you're going through the speed restriction bump to keep going. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. Um, it just kind of keeps you from losing time. So it looks like we got it pretty timed out all right. So we're going to be at 43, um, and it looks like we shouldn't hit 45 by the time we get there. So that's, that's going to be all right. We'll go ahead and bump it up now. Another thing I'm really hoping with with this new game is that they're really gonna in, uh, increase the physics, and I'm I'm really kind of curious to see what that means. Uh, because, at least to me, I don't I don't think this game is very realistic as far as the physics go. I mean, it, it has the right idea and it's moving in the right direction, but it's just not all the way there yet. If you know what I mean, uh, you know, you don't have uh, certain aspects of a of a real life. Uh, train that are in this game as far as like having the weight of your cars behind you and how they react to your train uh the power of physics are kind of almost arcadey a little bit and then the sounds aren't even really that great i mean there's just it's just a little bit of everything it definitely needs a, a overhaul so uh you know for instance um this last weekend for my birthday my girlfriend got me uh engineer for a day at Roaring Camp Railroads in Santa Cruz, California. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have heard of that railroad. It's actually pretty popular in California. Uh, it's like a tourist destination that most people will actually go to if you've never been before. Um, it goes through the Redwoods, uh, and it, it's actually the steepest and sharpest railroad in the United States. And so it's really cool. Let's get ourselves slowed down here, sorry. Do I pay attention for a sec? It's a really, really cool experience. Uh, they use uh, steam locomotives on the railroad. They have they have chaise, um, which are built for those types of railroads. Um, and 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 the whole the whole experience is is really cool. Usually, with those engineers for days, you have uh, they don't, they don't let you really get involved in the the actual operation of the locomotive. Um, and it usually consists of you showing up for one of the trips and just kind of sitting in the cab and then when that trips over you're done so uh, with this one it's actually really cool because they let you not only operate the locomotive but also uh, you know you're actually there for the whole day so you show up at like 8 a.m. and you help pull the engines out of the shed with like um, uh, actually they hadn't pulled out when I got there already but uh, you know they weren't even fired up yet we went in there and fired them all up and greased them all up and you know you're literally taking a, a steam engine that's completely shut down and firing it up and bringing it to life and it's it was really 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 cool to see how they did that and you know you're just hoping with the getting the locomotive ready for the for the day's work and you know then you get to go head over to the yard and and help switch uh you know help switch all the tracks and get the locomotive coupled up to all the cars and then you know, then you start your day. There's there's three trips that you go up the mountain, um, which include there's there's an eight uh, percent there's a piece on the hill where you go you're pushing the train backwards up at eight percent grade, uh, which is insane. Most trains don't even get over two percent like on a main line, uh, and what that means is you're going um, up eight feet for every hundred feet that you travel. So it's a really really steep hill, um, and it requires a perfect amount of throttle, perfect amount of pretty much everything to keep you from stalling while you're going up that hill and it, I mean it was just a really really cool experience to see how those guys handle all those situations um, and then there's certain parts that let you drive and you know I think the funnest part for me was being able to blow the whistle and like and that's something you you can do in a game and it's, and it's fun to do but like when you do it in real life and you're the one doing it like it was probably one of the coolest experiences I've ever had and uh uh, I think it was like 150 bucks to do the whole thing, which is really not that much money if you think about it. I mean, it's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the 150 bucks isn't a lot of money, but for what you get to do and the experience that you get to have, it's it's worth every penny. Um, if you guys are ever in the area or if you've even been to that road before, I highly, highly recommend checking that out. Um, it was probably one of the best experiences of my life and something I'm probably going to keep doing. 
um, because it's just, I mean, it's just a really, really cool thing to do. Um, it's not every day you get to drive, you know, over a hundred year old steam locomotive. So, but I mean, just, just going back to what I was saying about this game not being realistic. I mean, this game doesn't even touch the tip of the iceberg when it comes to operating a real locomotive. Uh, you know, I, I, I even talked to the engineers and they were, you know, when I first got there and they were asking me how much experience I had, uh, you know, with, with trains. And I, and I said, you know, I've played a lot of ex simulators since I was a kid. I've, I, you know, I have a basic idea of how this all works and whatnot. And, um, he kind of chuckled a little bit and, and he's just like, it's not really the same. He's like, there's just so much moving parts and, and components that you have to manage that you don't manage in a computer game. And, and not only that, but if you, you know, if you mess up in real life, there's not, there's no do-overs. I mean, so it was, a, uh, it was really cool. It was really, really, really cool. If you guys have any railroads around you that offer that same, that same kind of, uh, experience, or if you guys are ever in California, I highly re recommend checking it out. Uh, even if you don't decide to do locomotive or engineer for a day, uh, definitely go check out that railroad. It's it's really really cool. There's a lot of history behind it. Uh, it goes through all the redwood forests, and uh, it's it's about an hour and a half train ride, and uh, it's uh, something you should definitely check out. So, all right. So it looks like we're getting pretty close to the end here. We're about two miles from Hoboken. Uh, we're just going through the final part here, going under the going under the mountains through the tunnel. Uh, I'm really, uh, I'm really excited to keep making videos like this. Um, if you guys haven't checked out my channel, I, I make a little bit of everything. I kind of just make videos on whatever I feel like playing. Uh, I'm not really going for a huge audience. I really just en enjoy making videos and enjoy playing video games. So whenever I have free, free time from work um, and I'm playing video games, I figure why not just make a movie and throw it on YouTube and see what happens. That's kind of how I see it. Um, and I figure if I make any money out of it, then cool, it will buy me a new route, or it will buy me a new plane, or it will buy me a new whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't, I'm not looking to get rich off YouTube. Um, I do pretty well already, so it's not really that's not really my motivation for making videos. Uh, I really just enjoy making videos, and I enjoy playing video games. So I figured, why not just do something like this? That will be a little bit more useful than just sitting on my butt doing nothing, so... Uh, that's my theory on it. If, um, if you guys like train sim stuff, um, uh, you know, you just, I guess, just leave a like. I, I don't need the likes necessarily. It just lets me kind of know that you guys like this kind of type of content and want to see more games similar to this or even more train sim or more simulators or whatever. Um, it gives me an idea of what people want to see. Um, and just kind of dictates I guess what I could play because I already play a lot of games and if maybe if I want to make a video I don't want to be so repetitive on a certain game I just kind of want to mix it up a little bit so um, yeah that's just my thoughts if you guys are interested in checking out other stuff uh, you know you can subscribe and just it'll let you know whenever I'm posting new content I play like I said a bunch of simulators I play uh, you know I play I play Xbox I play GTA I play Battlefield I play Call of Duty all those regular games um, computer, I do, you know, all the simulators I do, um, I just recently, uh, did LSPDFR, which is a mod for GTA 5, which is kind of like a, p a police officer mod, which is pretty cool, um, I'm just still learning how to play that game, but I'll pretty much make some videos on that at some point as well, um, and whatever other new games come out, I mean, there's so many new games coming out, um, in the next year or so, so, um, You know, if you guys enjoy this kind of stuff, then, you know, I would appreciate you guys just sticking to it and, uh, I guess just letting, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to slow down here. Throw a notch back of power back in so we don't slow down too much. 
So, oh yeah, sorry guys. So anyway, what I was saying was, yeah, if you guys enjoy this kind of stuff, just, I mean, you're welcome to subscribe, you're welcome to like, you're welcome to do whatever you want. Um, I'm going to keep making videos, and, uh, you know, if you guys decide to, to join in, uh, that'd be great. And I look forward to making more videos for you guys, and, you know, I might even start streaming too. I think it's, uh, it's kind of a cool uh, idea to be able to stream something and kind of bring a community together while you're watching gameplay. I mean, it's one thing just to watch videos on YouTube, but it's also another thing to, like, all come together and not only watch the videos that you'd watch anyway, but be able to communicate with each other and form friendships and be informed about new and content that's coming out and, and stuff like that. So uh, I might look into doing that as well at some point. I do have a Twitch channel uh, set up. It's in the description. Uh, you guys are welcome to go over there and check it out. I haven't done anything yet, but like I said, might look into doing something like that at some point. Um, other than that, I think that's pretty much it. We're, we're just coming into the station here, so we'll just go ahead and get this finished up, and uh, we'll call it a we'll call it a day. Let's go ahead and throw our bell on us. So people know we're coming in. Start throwing some breaking. A little jerky. Alrighty. And it looks like we are 30 seconds behind. Not that bad. We'll see what our final score should be. I think we'll get a three star on this one. Shouldn't be that too bad. But uh, anyway, thanks guys. I, I really appreciate you guys coming by if you, if you guys stuck around. Um, like I said, probably be making some more of these videos, so if you guys want to stay tuned, uh, just, you know, keep an eye out, and uh, we'll keep making more videos. Um, I had a good time. This was fun, so I definitely make more, I think. But uh, I think that's pretty much it. So let's see how we did. We got a 982, which is three stars. Oh, and we got an achievement, too. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll catch you later.